Hi, it's Chrissy again for part four of Return to Intimacy of the Return and Reunion curriculum. So we want to pick up talking about building and maintaining trust. Now this is kind of to address a situation that um, happens. Um, it's not the first time it's happened. It definitely won't be the last. Um, but when couples are separated, sometimes trust can be broken in those situations. And when that happens, it's always best to admit that something had happened, come out with it, um, be honest, um, apologize, admit your responsibility, and then ask for forgiveness. Those are the three steps that we recommend for when trust is broken. Now that's not always just a sailor making a poor decision in port and it's not always a spouse that um, opens up, um, you know, emotional connection with someone or physical connection with someone back at home. Um, but realize that when you are not regularly communicating and you're not regularly seeing each other, you're not having a full gamut of connection within the relationship. And that just opens up areas for trust to be broken. Uh, it's a it's a big navy, but it's a small navy. So think too that um, if you think that that's something that won't be disclosed, that there is a high likelihood that it will, um, things do get out. So just consider the fact that um, it's best to always just be open and honest because all relationships are built on mutual trust and mutual respect. So think about how that works within your relationship. Um, and some people are more offended by emotional infidelity. So that means that I've like opened up myself and I've talked about my relationship in a way that would not be respectful of someone to someone that's not my spouse. And some people are much more uh, offended by physical infidelity. So somebody having sex with someone that's not it, a part of our relationship, that would be um, upsetting to me. So consider too like some of the ways that you can set ground rules within your relationship that would facilitate open trust and open communication. So just as a general example, um, my husband works with, uh, we're in a heterosexual relationship, so think too about how this is different for um, other types of relationships. But my husband works with females. Um, a lot of people are trading um, COVID-19 and coronavirus memes right now. Um, so when he trades memes with someone at work, I've met this person before, I'm included on those texts as well. Um, that's just an opportunity for us to kind of say, hey, this is the general conversation that we've been having and it's not inappropriate. And the same too, if uh, my spouse goes away for a long business trip and we reach out to someone who is a male, who's a mutual friend, um, all of the conversations we're having about fixing the car um, we'll also have my husband included on him on them even when he's unable to uh, to see those texts. So th that's just a, a ground rule that works for us, but consider having those conversations amongst each other so that everyone feels like they have um, they can trust and communicate in the best way um, for your relationship. Okay, and reach out to Fleet and family if there has been infidelity because that can be a, a, a much more tricky situation to navigate through with the additional stressors of returning from a deployment, with the additional stressors of going through a um, global crisis. So just consider and pat yourself on the back. Everyone's doing the best that they can. Um, so this is a nice part of this curriculum and we cover some intimacy journals here, which are basically kind of those situations that you hear a lot of. Um, after a reintegration. So one of them is uh, from the view of the sailor and the sailor says something like, man, I just wanted to come home, relax, but we've got family in the house, grandparents, in-laws, we've got children running around everywhere. Um, all I wanna do is sleep and I want to spend time with my spouse. That's it and I don't understand why she doesn't wanna spend time with me and she doesn't wanna be intimate. So you hear the other side of the story from the spouse at home, which says something to the effect of, everyone's been so worried about the sailor for so long, I tried so I tried to make a nice big event for him. He doesn't seem to appreciate it. Um, all he seems to wanna do is have sex. I'm not comfortable with it when there's other people in the house. And I'm also uncomfortable with myself because I gained a few pounds since we've been together. Um, so consider that things can look a little different depending on the lens you're looking at and open communication usually opens those up. For that couple, I might suggest something like, 
just talk about the ways that you've changed and how you're uncomfortable with that current situation. Talk um, the significant, the sailor, um, next time let them know that you don't want people around. Maybe, and again, this is not, doesn't work for uh, people that are on stay at home orders, but maybe that's an opportunity for the couple to say, hey, we're just gonna go get a, a night out, just the two of us for a second, um, so that we can be on our own and we don't have to worry about people in the house with us. So consider, and again, these intimacy journals are, uh, you know, kind of good for a laugh, but um, I think it's important to kind of understand how people have different views about things. Um, I would say too, just on a personal note, I've had three children. I've gained and lost 50 pounds three different times, and it took me about a year to get that weight off. And that's not because I was having cake for breakfast every day. It's just the way my body handled um, having children. But when I was 50 pounds heavier, I didn't look the same, I didn't talk the same, I didn't walk the same. So you better believe that being physically intimate after having a child and going through that, that physical experience, that that was difficult for me. Um, but we had to find different ways to kind of uh, bridge the gap, okay? So one of the things that can happen, and these are some tips from couples, think about courting before homecoming day. And again, those 20 questions are a really good way to just jump out and start the flow of communication. Um, making love every day, that just means making time to invest in the relationship at that moment. The other thing I like to remind people with this one is if sex and physical intimacy is important to you and you would like that to happen at a certain time of day, maybe make that expectation known. So if you want sex at night, it actually starts the whole process starts from the moment you wake up. So if I might want that in the evening, I might be waking up and making coffee, um, taking care of some needs around the house, um, providing some compliments, uh, talking about some future plans, maybe picking up a gift, um, just some grocery store flowers or something small. I picked up your favorite tea um, from, the, from the grocery store. You know, little things like this um, will invest into that relationship to where you get what you want at the end. Whereas the other side of the coin is I wake up late, I'm frustrated, why is everything different around here? I thought I told you I wanted things this way. Um, I don't understand why I have to keep reminding you about this. Why are the kids so poorly behaved? Those kind of things are not going to have the results you want on the at the end of the day, okay? So consider when you wake up what you want the end to look like and plan for it before, before we get to that point. Some people uh, flip the switch and they, be, they can become physically intimate, but not everyone is like that, okay? So consider that as well. Expect, expect for your first intimate experience to be awkward. That is okay, that is normal. That is most people's experience, all right? Tell your partner that you love and appreciate them every day. I appreciate everything that you have done during this deployment. This is for spouses at home as well. I really think that you have been doing a fantastic job. I am proud to be your spouse. I am proud of the work you're doing. I'm proud to be associated with you. Um, and all relationships are built on mutual respect and mutual trust, always, all of them, all right? Um, so, in summary, we want all relationships to have open-ended questions, to have, have open communication. That's usually the best way to go about experiencing change and experiencing a separation. I really do feel, as a spouse who's someone who has gone through separation before, I do think this strengthens couples if it's done correctly, with time and with regular investment in the relationship. I do think this is something that can be beneficial to couples. Celebrate and experience change. Also make, make sure you take time to celebrate some of the fantastic things that have happened in your absence. You know, some spouses get degrees, some spouses go on to start businesses um, and celebrate that with them. Say, I'm really proud of, of how you've made use of this time, or I'm really proud that you have continued to thrive under such difficult situations and give a lot of kudos. And then manage your personal expectations through communication, and then through investment within the relationship. So I want you to know that Fleet and Family is here for you during this crisis. I'm gonna provide our centralized scheduling number, but for you, it's probably best you reach out through email. Um, 
you can reach out to me, christina.d.hughes.ctr at navy.mil. Um, we also have a generalized email for training requests that can be sent to a different trainer. So that is FFSC, like Fleet and Family Support Center, FFSC SD, as in San Diego, training request at navy.mil. All right, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for what you're doing for our country, and we look forward to seeing all of you when this is over. Bye, stay safe.